everyone, and thanks for joining us today for our live PPC Grader, uh, you know, uh, clinic here. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, are you acing or failing in, in terms of your, your AdWords performance. And uh, to do this, we're going to be uh, having a real uh, interactive presentation here today. We'll be doing some live account assessments for real live uh, AdWords accounts. And so, um, so yeah, uh, we've got an exciting agenda for you today. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Larry Kim. I'm the founder of WordStream and we're the provider of uh, PPC management software uh, that includes uh, an interesting thing called the 20-minute PPC workweek. And I'm joined by my uh, esteemed colleague, uh, Sam Owen. He's, uh, well, Sam, why don't, you, why don't you introduce yourself here? Thanks, Larry. Uh, so I work over at Hannapin Marketing and I write for the blog PPC Hero, if any of you guys out there uh, read that. Uh, I've been working in PPC for about four years now. I manage both PPC and CRO, so that's conversion rate work, looking at landing pages, that kind of thing for Hannapin. And, uh, and yeah, so that's me. Great, thanks, Sam. And, and uh, listeners, uh, you know, I happen to think that PPCHero.com is really is like the best PPC blog out there, like in terms of like uh, the focus on PPC and everything you ever needed to know about uh, paid search. If you're not already subscribing to that, I would uh, highly recommend that. But uh, let's just move on here. Uh, so, as we were saying earlier. Um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, sort of uh, Sam's take on uh, you know PPC optimization, why it matters, and and uh, his process. Uh, and then um, most of the time today will be spent today actually auditing uh, PPC accounts. And um, hopefully by watching uh, you know Sam and I go through these accounts, it'll give you a good indication of like how to how to uh, do these types of um, you know critical reviews of, of, of AdWords accounts and try to figure out you know possible red flags and that kind of stuff so um, before jumping into that uh, audit I just wanted to uh, mention that we're having a hashtag for this uh, webinar presentation today uh, it's think PPC so if you just include that hashtag in your Twitter tweets um, uh, then uh, you can kind of kind of chat along with us. Uh, I think Megan is going to be monitoring that. Uh, and also, um, you know, the, if you have questions, you can, um, you can, um, you can uh, take a look at the, uh, you know, the, the, the question box there and, and, and just type them in there and, and, and we'll, we'll get to them uh, in the presentation. All right. So, uh, so before uh, doing the audit, let's just ask a couple questions to the audience. Got to get a, get a sense for who's who's out there today. Um, so our first question for the audience is, uh, you know, what area, in terms of the, the stuff that you do in your PPC account, what takes the longest for you to optimize? And um, I think the poll is open. So while the answers are coming in, Sam, I was just wondering, uh, you know, what what do you see as the biggest time suck in terms of your day-to-day uh, -day work? So it's, it's obviously one of those questions where I'm trying to think, like if I'm doing one big block of optimization, it's very different for if I'm thinking about how much I have to do throughout the year. So depending on the tools, et cetera, we have with the account, bids, bids is a big part of it if I don't have a bid automation software helping on an account. Uh, but I think if I'm trying to set up like a really good keyword audit and go through, that's probably individually the toughest thing to set up just in terms of like one off time. And then ads is always one of those things if I want a good strategy for setting up ads, then I'm going to have to revisit it every week and, and write some new copy and I'm not a particularly uh, ad eloquent person. So that's kind of tricky for me because I have to kind of get my creative juices flowing to write good ad copy. So um, that, that's where I say it. What about you, Larry? Uh, it's it's the keyword still um, let, for me. Uh, let's see uh, what our audience has to say on this matter. Um, Ma Megan, could you see what our survey says? Uh, and uh, it's uh, the keywords uh, by narrow margin, followed by bids. Uh, and uh, if you add keywords and negative keywords together, that's even more. Uh, so, uh, but, but it's a pain of all, all around. Uh, and I think we have just one more question. Um, uh, so if we could launch uh, poll question number two, please. Uh, the question is, how long have you been involved in search marketing? And of course, we, we'd love to know uh, kind of how, how many years of experience people have here to get a sense for who, who, who's on the call today. 
Um, and uh, I know, Sam, you mentioned uh, you've been doing PPC for four years now, is that right? Yep, so I, I started over in England uh, straight after I graduated and moved over to the US a couple of years ago, so pretty evenly split between a couple of years in the UK and a couple of years in the US, uh, but I'm firmly in that C camp right now. How about you? <laughs> Too long. I was like, I was like, like an advertiser back in 2001, so if you can believe that. So uh, back then, uh, funny story. Uh, if you spent a million dollars on paid search per year, which isn't that, isn't that all that much these days, they would fly you in to uh, to Mountain View to meet with the CEO of Google, and like they would, you know, return your calls and stuff like that. <laughs> now it's like, early connections. <laughs> but now it's uh, a little harder to, to get their attention. Um, so, um, so yeah, let's see what our audience has to say here. Uh, so we've got a, looks like a kind of a bimodal distribution of um, kind of uh, new new people and um, and, and uh, more senior people. That's great because we we've, we're going to have something for everyone here. All right. So Sam, um, do you want to take it away here a little bit? Talk about, about your views on. Uh, PPC optimization? All right, so I just kind of wanted to frame this discussion today. Uh, and apologize, these slides are a little stupid, but I think we're trying to get the point across. <laughs> so um, you have to ask yourself the question why is account optimization key? So it's the same question as why do you brush your teeth? Why do you pay your bills? Why do you put gas in your car? It's because it's necessary and also because it feels kind of good. Uh, so just one of those things that you really have to to do even though it's not necessarily always something that uh, you want to do. Now in terms of optimizing your account, so there are a few important things that we wanted to highlight. So first, identify your key metric. Um, obviously things like click-through rate or quality score might be important, but if it's cost per conversion, if it's the number of conversion, number of sales, how much revenue you make, you always want to have that at the forefront of your mind whenever you're auditing because that's what you're working towards. Um, then recognizing how important quality scores to everything. So this is kind of up for debate, but I think it's still kind of one of those uh, indicators in an account. So something we, we still look at for sure. Uh, keep in mind that different metrics are gonna affect one another. Obviously, if you improve click-through rates, it's gonna affect how much you know, you're paying for keywords. Uh, it's gonna affect your overall cost in your account. CPAs are gonna change. So you just wanna be aware of that, that everything in PPC is kind of interlinked. And then up and to the right, this is just a phrase we use, but as long as everything's going up and to the right, that's why we optimize, keep things ticking along, make things a little better every week. That's kind of one of those key things you want to work to as well. And then this is the guiding formula of PPC that we like to talk about in our office. Uh, so spend over CPC times conversion rate equals leads. And really what we're looking at here is uh, two of these metrics, so CPC and conversion rate, because these are the two that we can work on. So CPC, we can uh, improve click-through rates, we can change bids, conversion rate, we can look at our landing page, we can write better ad copy. Um, so so this is these are all the things that we can really improve, and then at the end of the day, it all kind of adds up to either how much we spend or how many leads we're bringing into our account. Awesome, thanks Sam for that overview. Um, oh, there, uh, so now, uh, Let's just jump in. Uh, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at these two accounts today. Uh, we uh, I tried to pick two accounts that were a little little different in terms of their size and their industries. Uh, so uh, let's let's jump right in here. Um, so uh, Sam, can you s see that report on your screen there? I can. Can you zoom in a little bit, maybe? Or yeah, yeah. I'll uh, just do this thing here. How's that? Is that any better? Yeah, it's a little better. I wonder if you can make it a little wider just so everyone can see it. But, yeah. Okay. Well, it's a little zoomed in, so it's going to be a little gra uh, pixely, but uh, hopefully that's that's okay. Um, all right. So, so let's 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 audit some some PPC accounts. Get get to work here. So, basically, what you're looking at here it's it's an actual um, you know it's an actual person's account. Uh, so. Uh, you know, uh, one of a volunteer's account. Uh, to, to they they wanted us to do an audit for, for their account, and uh, and what you're looking at on your screen here, it's um, essentially a, a, a kind of a, a, a report card that we've generated, and this is using the AdWords Performance Grader, which is a free tool, uh, which uh, was is is offered in, in partnership with um, 
Hennepin Marketing and, and, and WordStream, so you can access this, this free audit tool uh, on either site, but basically we're just going to walk through this particular uh, report and try to get, get a sense for what the heck's going on here, what, what areas to improve or, or areas uh, that, that things are doing well. Um, this particular account, he's a um, kind of a smaller company, it's a, a, it's a European company, I think based in Denmark or something like that, and uh, basically they're doing um, uh, translation services, so, you know, Europe, they've got lots of different languages, so you need to translate you know, official documents from one language to another, that's kind of their, their core business. Uh, at, a, at a high level, uh, I see that they're spending around 18, 1,800 euros per month on average, uh, and that's roughly, you know, 2,500 dollars, US dollars, and um, we're just going to uh, kind of walk through the various key performance metrics of this particular account, um, starting with kind of this notion of wasted spend. And so here uh, in the audit, what we're doing is we're just trying to get a sense for, um, you know, how actively the, the uh, advertiser is, you know, trying to proactively uh, stop their ads from showing up from irrelevant keyword searches. And um, the way we do this is we just kind of look at the negative keyword activity in the account, you know, how many negative keywords were added in the, in the last month, in the last quarter, you know, 97 in the last quarter, 18 in the last month, just kind of get a sense for, like, are they actually, you know, not every click on, on your paid search ad is going to be relevant. We find that, you know, anywhere from 5 to 40% of it is, 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 is potentially uh, junk searches, and so that's why it's important to be really targeted. Um, so he's kind of in the middle here. Uh, Sam, any, any thoughts on, um, you know, this, uh, this particular metric or, 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 the, or the concept of negative keywords in general? Yeah, so... I mean, the numbers you have there, it's, it's probably very specific on the number of keywords you have in the account to start with, how many broad matches, how many phrase matches, what percentage is exact, etc. So, you know, if your account's mostly exact, then you're going to have less negatives in there. Um, but the things I, I like to look at for wasted spend in general, so there are, there's two things I look at. One is, obviously, the number of negatives in there, going through the search term reports, making sure we pull out every piece of data that looks like it's potentially irrelevant, and then the other is uh, where I'm bidding too high. So we, we have something called a cost to conversion threshold. And essentially what we look at is like where am I bidding or where am I paying for a keyword, say over 90 days, more than four times what my CPA target is. And then I'll run a filter in AdWords and, and pull those keywords up. And then even if those are broad matches, then I can dive in and look for negatives to add. I can look to change bids down. So, so that's kind of the approach. Negatives is definitely an important part of it. Um, I also like to, so it's interesting when we look at negatives because there's a couple of things here too. Uh, I like to use a lot of what I call embedded negatives and I just use those to make sure that my traffic is funneled to the right place. So if I have a couple of campaigns with similar-ish keywords, I like to put the keywords from the first campaign as negatives in the second campaign. So I don't know how that would kind of um, skew if you were to pull one of my accounts into the greater Larry. Um, it probably looked like I had a lot more negative keywords than I do just because of the way I like to kind of shape my traffic. No, it, it would be fine because uh, you probably, you're probably more advanced and so the, the way this grade works is that it's, it's kind of grading you against your, your peers. So uh, it, it, the, it's grading these based on like other companies in that industry of that size. And so, um, you know, you, you probably use those advanced tactics, but other, like, large companies uh, might, might also be leveraging those advanced tactics. So um, it kind of works itself out, in the, itself out in the end. But, um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, totally, you're, I think you're, you're dead on on the, on, on the, uh, the negative keyword stuff here. Um, Sam, I don't know if you'd agree with this, but if I, it, like, for me, it's like when I'm doing these audits, if I only had like five minutes to work on something or 10 minutes and I can only pick one thing to, to, to do do in terms of like a quick hit, like I just want to make a small impact for this week or whatever, but I, I need to do it fast, I, I'd spend it doing uh, negative keyword research. Any thoughts on that? So I think uh, bids is probably where I go first and then the search term report second. So I just so like... Per, it's it's anything, yeah, it's pretty much the same. If there's anything crazy going on in the account, just uh, you know, watch out for the, those broad matches that might kind of run a mock or whatever. <laughs> of course, uh, agreed. Um, so, uh, moving along here, um, you know, this report outlines a couple of different key performance metrics. The next one on the list here is quality score, which is sort of Google's um, Im impression of how your click-through rate uh, is doing, uh, primarily. Um, 
uh, you know, relative to what they think your click-through rate should be. Uh, and so, you know, the, the benefit of this quality score uh, or, or the, the penalty of the quality score has to do with, you know, if you have an above average quality score, you can, you can actually get better exposure and lower cost per clicks. And, and the reverse is also true. If you have below average quality scores, that you end up paying more for your clicks and you get worse exposure. So this is the, um, in this graph, what I've done is I've kind of looked at all the keywords in this guy's account and, and totaled up the impressions. Like, where are the ad impressions happening? Are they happening for quality score keywords of one, two, three, four, five? And just try to get a sense for what that distribution looks like. Because it's not, you know, typically you've got, you know, all sorts of different keywords in your account. Some of them are doing great, some of them are doing not so great. So you want to see kind of what does that distribution look like as a portfolio of keywords. And so the green bars on this graph, they have to do with the, um, you know, the quality score distribution for this particular account and the yellow curve kind of shows what's kind of more typical or, or recommended for this type of company at, at this stage of, of spend. And so his average quality score is a little bit on the low side, it's, you know, 2.6. Uh, so that's, you know, going to be below the average of like 5.1. Uh, so uh, as a result, I think, uh, you know, there's probably some stuff we could be doing here. Any thoughts, uh, Sam? So for this account specifically, I wonder if language is playing a role in low quality score here because um, I know he has keywords in different languages because it's a translation service so I wonder if perhaps there's a keywords in one language with ads in another with a landing page in another possibly or there's some kind of disconnect going on there that Google is looking at and seeing that perhaps the, the quality score could be low. So I think you've got some fantastic insights there. I, uh, you're actually correct. So I'm able to see a little bit more data like that's not on this report because I, I have access to the account. And uh, that is actually the the problem. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in, in, in one second. But it does have to do with, uh, you know, language targeting and um, and, 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 and the like. So, uh, so, so spot on. Uh, uh, let's move along here. Impression share. Uh, personally, I view impression share as being important it's basically a uh, kind of a measure of you know of the total volume of searches uh, of the keywords that you've in, you've indicated interested in in terms of like the uh, the locations and types of keywords that you're interested in how much of that share uh, are you capturing like are you capturing you know the lion's share of, of available available uh, keyword searches uh, for the the markets that you're interested in or or is, is there something wrong because Google likes to um, you know if, uh, if if thinks your ads aren't that great, it'll actually pair back and, and it would prefer not to show your ads if, it, if they don't think that they're relevant. And so this particular adver advertiser has a, a budget weighted impression share uh, of 42%, meaning 33% um, of the time uh, people are searching for the keywords that they're interested in, uh, but uh, the ads aren't appearing because of uh, kind of a lack of budget. And 25% of the time, those ads don't show up due to uh, you know poor poor relevancy, and so um, you know as a result, it's a 42% um, impression share. Any thoughts on on this one, Sam? So the the budget limited impression share is always interesting to me. I like to um, see. I guess the thing is that you need to know a little bit more about the account in general. Like, is it? Uh, is it because there are campaigns that haven't performed too well historically and we just kind of ramp the budgets down? Or is it because we have a strict marketing budget coming from you know, somewhere else or just it's a long sales cycle so can't afford really to ramp the budget up? But I mean, essentially I'd like to boil my campaigns down to the point where I don't have to limit them by budget. I prefer just to have successful campaigns running and, and if they're making me money, keep them going. Um, loss to rank is a little different. so. Uh, that's something that could be market specific. It could be um, like a lot of broad matches, and some people have really specific products that are taking up some of that, um, you know, impression share that much more relevant, and you're kind of missing out there. But it's not traffic you need to worry about. So uh, the, the budget one's just a question I would ask. It it really entirely depends on the uh, on the account and the the company, etc. So, so Sam, um, I was wondering if I could get your take on this uh, uh, kind of. Um, opinion here. I like to run my my uh, impression shares, you know, close to 60, 70 or 80 percent kind of impression share, like high impression shares. Uh, and the reason why uh, is because I'd rather be more picky. So what I mean by this is like if I'm only capturing, you know, 42 percent of the impression share with the budget that I have, uh, I might want to either narrow the um, 
the, the, the geographic targeting or, or the keyword targeting parameters uh, to be a little bit more picky and more specific about the types of keywords uh, and, and uh, uh, like the types of keywords that I'm buying uh, so that you know I could be more intentional and like get you know 60 70 80 percent of, of my you know specific you know these are the keywords that I really want as opposed to 42 percent of like a whole pile of, 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 of kind of potentially broader keywords any thoughts on that I think it, that's pretty much exactly how I feel too so uh, an example would be um, let's say you have someone doing research on a product right and they get one of your keywords and they um, and they're researching it, and then we know that they probably come back through another keyword, which is a more buying-focused keyword, and buy the product. If at any point in that cycle of clicking on the two keywords, you're not showing up, uh, then you're kind of destroying that whole conversion funnel. So um, I prefer that if one person's going to see you, they're going to see you a lot of the time, which is why I try and really lower that loss of budget impression share, either by cutting stuff back or you know getting rid of campaigns that aren't performing well. Uh, so, so I'm pretty much on the same page as you there, Larry. I think that that's kind of the way I go to. Awesome. Uh, so uh, our next metric here, it has to do with click-through rate. Uh, we said earlier that the, um, the quality scores were, were a little low. So uh, let me go back to that. It was like 2.6 out of 10. Uh, and and uh, one of the big kind of drivers of quality score is this click-through rate metric, which I think is really an important metric because it kind of gives you a sense for if your, your ads and your keywords are, are, are resonating with your, your target audience. And so um, click-through rate is actually a pretty tricky metric uh, into the benchmark because, um, you know, when you ask someone what's a good click-through rate, uh, I think the, the answer is it depends on your average position uh, and sort of... Uh, you know, because like obviously a higher, you know, more prominent ads are predisposed to getting higher click-through rates. Uh, you know, similarly, it's it's also difficult to know, uh, you know, how is your click-through rate because it's not really known. Like people don't generally know off the top of their head what's a good click-through rate in, in average position two or average position three, etc. It, it it varies a lot by industry. It varies a lot by you know. Uh, your, your your location, etc. And so, this is a pretty interesting uh, benchmark report that that we've we put together here. Basically, what it is, as you can see, it's kind of graphing your click through rate based on the um, the average position. And so you can kind of see how the the higher, more prominent ads tend to get higher click through rates. Each of these green dots on on the on the the graph represents one of the top 200 keywords within this particular account. Now, uh, the the uh, the yellow curve shows sort of uh, what what's typical, like what's expected click-through rate at different um, positions, and so you can see the majority of those dots, those keywords, green, those green dots on the plot are below that yellow curve, and so they're below kind of the expected average uh, uh, click-through rate for that position. In aggregate, the account seems to have a click-through rate of 1.45 uh, in an average position of, of around 2.17. So that's a very prominent position in the second spot. But I would say that's a pretty a low click-through rate of 1.45, and, and I think that's kind of reflected in the in the low quality scores. But I'd love to get um, kind of your take on on, on this, uh, Sam. So there's probably two things here. One, uh, how we judge whether our click-through rate is above or below the market, and that's where I look at my quality score for. Um, that they're pretty intrinsically tied together. And the other thing is uh, when I when I specifically audit click-through rate, the main thing I'm actually looking at is performance against myself. So I'll look historically rather than try and judge. Like, oh, I wonder if my competitor is getting 1.7% click-through rate. It's it's kind of something I know I'm not going to be able to figure out. So I like to see. Well, at least has my ad testing improved my click-through rate over the last month? Or, you know, if I look at my account a year ago, what's the click-through rate doing? Because if it's way down, then there's probably something going on. I can, like, search back through the account and work out, okay, where did it die? Was it a new competitor on the market? Which means, you know, maybe they're writing better ads than me. Maybe over time I haven't done any ad testing. And what's happened is someone else has copied my ad, and now my click-through rate's gone down. I need to actually get back to writing new copy and putting something fresh out there. So that, that's where I go with click-through rate. Cool. Um, so I agree. You can always do better, and 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 looking at your account, uh, uh, just seeing progress in, in CTR, that's important. But you, you Sam, you know, a 1.45 percent click-through rate, uh, like just in terms of like all the accounts that you see on average, like doesn't that see, strike you as being a little bit low for like the number two spot? It's it's really tricky because actually one interesting thing I've seen is that um, different countries have 
wildly different click-through rates. And uh, I learned this when I moved from the UK. So the UK has a crazy good click-through rate. So I, I don't know what it is about British people, but we love Google AdWords for some reason. And uh, and so I, I look I looked at accounts that I used to manage, and we'd have like average, you know, eight nine percent click-through rates. And when I moved to the US, it's like you know you're looking at like one to five percent depending on the market, depending on the client. And I'm like, okay, so what are we doing wrong? But actually, it's just it's just the um, like the behavior of different segments of so different populations, different people, et cetera, towards clicking on ads. And it could just be market specific too. So I think you're right that 1.45 looks a little on the low end and the low quality score would back that up that Google clearly thinks it's on the, the low end. Um, it's going to be, you know, changed by a number of factors. So how many brand key, how many people know about this guy's brand? So if he's not getting many brand clicks, um, then his click-through rate average is going to be a lot lower too. Uh, if it's one of those things that where the, the SEO links are really, really interesting, the organic links, uh, that could affect it too. So I don't necessarily worry. It would, it would probably cause me a little concern at 1.45 just as, hey, mm -hmm. let's dig into this a little further. Is it because our positions are low? Is this because you know in position one or two we're not getting many clicks at all, in which case I'm going to think about things like ad extensions or rewriting ad copy. Cool. All right, our next uh, section here has to do with account activity. Now, this is a little unusual as a key performance metric, uh, you know, because typically when you think about AdWords key performance metrics, you think of like click-through rate or quality score or cost per conversion or whatever. Yeah, pick your favorite KPI. Uh, but uh, um, when doing an account audit, I like to include kind of getting a sense for what's happening in the account, you know, recently. Uh, just to get to see, can I get a sense for, you know, uh, are, are people kind of actively managing the account or is it on autopilot or, or, or what? And so an interesting way that you can do this if you're an agency or if you're an advertiser uh, looking to see what your agency is doing or whatever, you can you can use the, um, the account history uh, report, sort of the, the recent change report. And uh, what, what we're doing here in this report is we're kind of summarizing uh, you know the changes in the account in terms of the different types of things that are changing in the account. Like, are, are you adding new campaigns? Are you adding new ad ad texts or new keywords? You know, ad groups, yeah, and then kind of aggregating that change history over the last 30 and 90 days for this particular account. Uh, it's kind of an interesting report because that's not not uh, you know that easy to to get to in AdWords, uh, and uh, and then that kind of gets gives you a sense for like how does this activity compare to other uh, you know, sm small, medium-sized businesses like in this in this uh, particular uh, industry of this size, and so you can see he's a little bit you know, ten ads, 40, 49 keywords. It, it's not nothing, so he's he's definitely you know doing a little bit of work for, uh, based on uh, these numbers. But it's uh, if you're spending two thousand five hundred dollars a month, um, you know that's still you know something like uh, thirty thousand a year, I guess. Uh, maybe it might be worth doing a little, a little bit more. Any, any thoughts on, on either this level act of activity, uh, Sam, or um, just account activ activity as a KPI in general? So it's an interesting one. Obviously, when you're managing clients, account activity is actually pretty important, right? Because they're paying you for the service of running their um, PPC. So if, if you're doing nothing, then that's kind of a red flag to a client. Uh, we typically look through like the change history in AdWords and. You know, if, if so, one of our client managers will look through, write a report, and be like, "Hey, I noticed you did this. What's up with that? <laughs> that kind of thing." So we we definitely use it uh, at Hannapin as something to like make sure that all the account managers are working in the accounts and getting stuff done. And I think um, there's another side of that, which is just familiarity with your account. So if you're in it every day, you're aware when things have changed. So it doesn't take you a month to work out that your click-through rates have suddenly dropped because competitors are pushing their budget. You see it that day, and that's one of the big, like the big things that is uh, there's like a benefit of hiring an agency in general, but also like if you're just an account or was in your account, just making sure that you catch things like that day or the next day as soon as possible. Totally agree. That's awesome. Um, okay, so maybe this particular guy, it's not like he's hes that lazy or anything. He's doing some work, but uh, may, uh, you know, maybe he could do like a little bit more work and, and uh, that would be uh, 
maybe beneficial um, just in terms of familiar, familiarity of, of what's going on and stuff, I agree. Uh, let's talk about long tail keyword optimization. So this is an interesting metric. Um, so remember we we're saying that the click-through rate on this particular account was uh, was a little low. So I wanted to diagnose sort of why that click-through rate was a little bit low. And one of the ways we can do this is, is look at the, the kind of what types of keywords are being targeted. You know, are you going after kind of those hopelessly competitive and broad terms like um, like translation or something like uh, which would which would be very expensive for this particular company you know like a one word keyword phrase or are you targeting like you know more specific long tail keywords like translating you know from you know french to english or whatever whatever services this company provides and so what i've done here is i've kind of counted up the uh, the impressions uh, like to all the keywords in the account and then I've done a kind of group by the length of the keyword so is it a one word keyword a two word keyword or th like a three or longer kind of long tail keyword and uh, here I think we might be looking at a little bit of a problem here um, and and that is that I saw that 70% of, of the guys uh, impressions were being kind of impressed to, to words like translation and stuff like that and so this is kind of a, on the lower side in terms of the, the mix that we like to see. Uh, any thoughts on kind of this KPI or, or this achievement here, um, Sam? So again, it kind of it depends on your on your market, but uh, one word keywords typically don't perform too well. And normally, my guess is that a lot of that stuff's probably broad matches. So that would suggest to me that you almost certainly want to go through this account, do a search term report, spin things out, uh, work out what's what's coming in on those those broad keywords. And again, it would explain the low click-through rate if your your keywords aren't as relevant to the, the long tail search term someone's probably searching for. Uh, so yeah, two and three is is generally what most of my accounts are made up of. Um, I think if you start getting two like far down the rabbit hole, if you get like five and six, that's where you just see all your keywords are low search volume, and that kind of just makes your account not nice to look at and work in. Uh, but for sure, if it's all one more keywords, there's probably something going on where you haven't optimized. Uh, you can if you, you could just pull a pivot table to get this information. So it's probably a little trickier. I don't know if there's um, something specific in Excel that counts words, but normally what I do is like, use a mixture of trim and then uh, replacing uh, space characters with something else and then counting those. I just count the spaces. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, well, thanks for that. And uh, moving along to ad text optimization. So here, um, you know, the click-through rate is, is based on two two factors. It's kind of like, are you picking the right keywords to begin with? And it looked like they were a little bit broad, but are the ads themselves resonating? Um, and so uh, here I'm just looking at kind of like the best ad in the account and looking at the worst ad in the account and looking at kind of the discrepancy in terms of the, um, the click-through rates uh, and, and also looking at sort of the number of ads in the in the account. So this particular guy has got around 50 ads in the account, uh, and they're running uh, several um, several ads per per ad group. Uh, so I think in general he's doing an okay job at trying out different ads. I think I remember seeing that he was was doing a little bit of yeah, see here 10 and 43 ads in the last 30 and 90 days. So that, I think that's um, you know, kind of an area that he's actually focusing on. Uh, any thoughts on uh, on this this KPI, Sam? So is that live text ads per ad group, Larry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I mean, that's that's good to have for testing. Uh, one thing I always kind of notice in accounts is that there are some people who don't pause out their losing ads. So um, that's something you guys should probably all just go and check. Uh, the if you have something set to optimize, you might have already. Conclude a test, but you get a little overconfident. You're like, well, I've got three ads, three live ads testing. Actually, Google's already tested that for you, and they're just sitting there getting one or two impressions of a day or whatever rather than anything important. So I think the number of ads per ad group that are still uh, being figured out, which has the best click through rate, is an important metric to look at. And uh, the number of active text ads is, is good if it's four and they're, they're fresh ads and they're all testing against each other. So I don't think there's a, a problem there. Uh, maybe a low number of ad groups if there's just 50 active text ads would be something I would think about. Cool. So for this um, best ad, so he's in the first position here, uh, and he was getting a 
click-through rate of 20.6%. So this wasn't a branded keyword. It was, it was like a, a translation ad on, on some, some keyword that wasn't his brand. Uh, but one thing I noticed, um, it's kind of blurred out here. I have to protect the identity of the, of, of the user here, but uh, he had um, internationalized the ad to be like, you know, in, in the language of, that it was targeting uh, specifically. So he had uh, like done that in, in that one particular account, but he had not done it in all the accounts, like in all the campaigns. So, so that could, could explain some of the, the, um, the discrepancies, it, like such a huge discrepancy in terms of click-through rates on ads. Um, right. So, uh, we're almost uh, through the report here. Uh, you know, we just talk about landing page optimization, and uh, this is pretty simple. It's just a count of the number of landing pages in, in, for for this particular business. He's driving all of his traffic to three landing pages. Any thoughts on that, uh, Sam? So, I, I guess this is really specific on your your industry. So, for this guy, it's probably lead generation, and um, you, you you almost certainly have less landing pages for a lead gen site than you would for an e-commerce site, for example. Um, I would, as it, it really isn't that much to, to get built out, I would probably try and have something tailored to each ad group, so to each set of ad copy in terms of a landing page. So um, if there's one that talks about, you know, if you have a, a translation ad group, I'd probably have a landing page which talks about translation where the heading is translation. And it's, it may be a little bit overstated, I think, in PPC, but it's just keeping that conversion funnel uh, nice and smooth. Don't give anyone anything that makes them think twice about where they are or if they're in the right place. So if they see an ad, if they type something about translation, they see an ad that says translation and they get to a landing page that talks about translation, that's like a, a perfect uh, route through the funnel. Whereas if one talks about um, like different speech products or something and someone has to rethink, like, is that exactly what I was looking for? So um, as long as those landing pages all line up with the ad groups, it's probably okay. But I think you just want to kind of go through, there's, there's definitely some room to potentially optimize them a little further. I think at a minimum, because this particular translation bureau does like six different languages, like French and German and whatever, uh, and Spanish, like you'd at least want to have, you know, six landing pages according to the different, you know, types of translation services that you offer. Like I think that's kind of um, really a really great opportunity for this this company to, to try to make the landing pages more relevant there by having a few more than three offers. Um, okay, well, overall, that's kinda, that kind of is a, the summary of this particular account in terms of this uh, first account. Uh, you know, and, and I hope you can see from a high level at least how by looking at you know auditing these various KPIs, you can start to see kind of a, a story come together. Like you know, oh the guy has kind of low quality score. Why does the, the, the quality score so low? Oh well, maybe it has to do with you know the, this low click through rate of 1.45. Well, why is the, the click through rate so low? And it's like oh well, maybe it's because he's kind of not that active, and and the keywords that he's targeting are are like very broad and and unspecific. Um, you know so. You can see how individually these these KPIs are very important, but together they kind of paint a picture of uh, of, of a strategy that you could employ to uh, to to getting this back on track um, because uh, it's still on the lower edge. Like there's definitely room for improvement here. Uh, any any final thoughts on this particular account, uh, Sam? No, so I think we kind of covered it. I think the the key here is going to be language wise. So making sure you have all your languages segmented in your account, uh, making sure you have landing pages specific to each language, each, each service you have, and then the keyword was, keywords was obviously the other big one. So just separating out some of those extra broad things and uh, extra broad keywords, sorry, and making sure that you kind of s split them out and, and put them in the right place because that's obviously affecting a lot of other metrics in the account. Right, right. Uh, okay, so just to mix things up a bit, uh, we just have one other uh, report to look at. It's a different industry and, and different um, size of company. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a much larger company, um, or not larger in terms of the company, but larger in terms of the, uh, the spend. Uh, so this, this company is spending um, $37,000 per month uh, on paid search. Uh, so that that's almost half a million dollars a year. Uh, so um, not a you know not a small amount there. Uh, and uh, this particular company is a immigration lawyer. So it's a law firm that's doing like 
immigration services uh, to Canada. Uh, that's where I'm from, by the way. So, um, but I but I immigrated to the U.S. Uh, but basically, um, the um, you know, similar kind of report. We don't we don't have to spend as much time on explaining all the different sections, but I, I wanted to kind of review the uh, the results here, um, at least. So in terms of like uh, waste spend, uh, so this is like the same kind of report, but just a different company here. This guy is actually doing less work than the guy spending, um, you know, the, the two thousand euro, uh, the, the the two thousand euros per month, uh, even though he's spending like ten times more. He's doing like no negative keyword research in the last ninety days, and no negative keyword uh, research in the last month. Any thoughts here? So, uh, so I, th I think I'd kind of like to see how many negative keywords he has in total. Maybe he feels like he's he's already got uh, a pretty good list. But there's a, there's a few recommendations. So maybe you'd have something like a like an overall list of negatives as well. So we haven't really talked about using lists, but that's something I like to use with uh, with lawyers I've worked with and just there's a lot of legal terms and people searching for a ton of different things that kind of get caught up in the broad matches so having something that kind of covers all different angles and, and gets rid of those before they even get to your accounts a good thing but it, it kind of shows that probably they haven't haven't been looking at like their search query report because um, you're, you're always going to pull out one or two different things if you do so Something One or up. two different things. I think you have a, a much higher view of the Google targeting than I do. Uh, you know, there, there's uh, there's always stuff in there that that, that kind of surprises me, isn't it? I think uh, I, I just looked at a Fortune 100 company's AdWords account, and uh, they have like a 10-man team working on it, and it was pretty tough to, to find them. So there was one or two things in that one for sure that I looked at. But, yeah, you're right. It obviously depends on, on how long, like, Professionals have been working on the account, so uh, how many broad matches you have, etc. So, so one interesting note here, uh, to audience: the owner of this account, the person who is uh, managing this account, is actually the lawyer himself. So it's the guy who is doing the. Um, so not a full-time search marketer. He's, uh, you know, it's kind of typical story where you 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 have a business and you you start. Um, uh, you know, investing you know a little bit of money on AdWords, it seems to be doing well. So you so you invest a little bit more in AdWords, and then you get to the point where you're spending you know thirty seven thousand dollars a month on AdWords, and yet you're not a a full time search manager. Do you see this a lot, Sam? Yeah, and this is probably like the sweet spot in terms of uh, where our clients come in from around this kind of spend. Because once you once you start to spend like a ton more, you're probably hiring a few in house people. Uh, become it makes financial sense. Uh, but at this kind of level, you can hire an agency with expertise to manage your account every day, get everything running smoothly, and uh, just looking down this report, I know we took a quick glimpse at it before uh, before the webinar here, but there, you know, there's a ton of optimizations potential, uh, you know, ton of optimization potential in the account, and you could certainly hire an agency um, to help you with that stuff, and it's probably going to save you a lot of money given you're spending half a million dollars a year roughly on PPC at this point. So interestingly Sam, I don't think he's doing terrible like his uh, his quality score here it's like the other guy was like 2 or something, this guy is like 5.6 his, his metrics don't seem too far off the curve here uh, in ter you know in terms of his his performance and, and, and what's driving that is, is a click-through rate here of um, 3.8 Eight nine in an average position of of two point four, so much higher than that other guy's click through rate, like more than almost triple that guy's click through rate in, in a lower position, um, and, and of course we're 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 saying that that's um, you know as you can see by this graph, the click through rates and and, and uh, seem to be above the expected uh, click through rates there, um, you know. It, make the case here, uh, Sam, like uh, like what, what like if if things aren't uh, Aren't horrible. It's like, it's not like a you know. I mean, there's always room for improvement, and he can still, of course, improve. But it's not not a train wreck or anything. Uh, you know, why should he why should he uh, rock the boat here and 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 make the like keep optimizing this? So I think you have to, to just think in like the the most simple KPI you can in terms of the amount of money you're spending on it. Uh, it could be one of those things where it, if there's 20, 30 percent to be improved there, you could save. You know, 150 grand a year in, in uh, wasted spend, potentially just looking at that um, negative keyword 
report you had up there. But the, you know, there's asking why to optimize is kind of a, a crazy question in PPC um, because your competitors are always optimizing too. So if you stop and they keep going, your click through rate's going to go down. If your ad copy gets stale, if competitors just say, see that your ad copy is working well and copy it, um, if someone else comes into the market, you know, if there's new keywords out there, if the if the shape of the market changes. Um, so, so here's just one quick example. Uh, I used to work for a company where we did uh, broadband comparisons, so looking at prices, and it worked like an affiliate. Well, in the UK, people used to call the industry mobile internet when you would have like one of those little USB dongles that connected to the internet. It was kind of a thing that people would use back in the day. Uh, and then that changed to mobile broadband as the main keyword. So if you weren't looking and optimizing, you might just think that the market's falling away from you if you don't have someone always there doing the research, adding the keywords, going through the account, making the optimizations. So it's just all those little things that add up. And normally what we see is a PPC account left alone tends to get worse. But a PPC account managed, it might stay the same and you're wondering what's going on here. Um, but for sure, those ones that are just left alone for a year, you'll notice that every metric is worse the year after. That's just what I've seen in the, the two or three that I've, I've noticed. So speaking of leaving accounts alone, here's kind of a summary of what the guy's been doing. So this guy is spending half a million dollars on ads, uh, you know, in his account per year. Uh, you know, he's done, you know, 24 keywords in the last month, you know, three ads in the last 90 days. You know, how does, any impressions on that there? So, I mean, it's it's a low number for sure. Uh, it looks like he did, he's, over the course of three months, he's done a decent amount of keyword research, 800 keywords, um, especially, I imagine because this is a, a, a lawyer that the CPCs are probably pretty high, so um, that 37 grand might even come from like the same number of keywords as uh, the guy before, just depend, obviously depending on the CPCs, but yeah, over three months it's not terrible, I mean, look, you know, he's done some work in each of those categories, but each month there's definitely some, some room to work, so that, for example, there's really been no ad testing over 90 days, just three ads. That's something that could potentially be like a big win. If you had managed to test, you know, five different rounds of ad copy in that time, uh, the improvements to click-through rates, quality score, et cetera, could all kind of speak for themselves. So that's, it's definitely one of those things you want to look at. Sure. Just to clarify, readers, our audience, uh, the um, these numbers in terms of like chain, the keyword changes 24 and 818 that has to do with like either new edited or deleted so like maybe you change the keyword bid once well that would register as as, as uh, you know one or if you deleted the keyword that would be another if you paused it that would be another we're just counting the total number of changes and you can you can change them in, in many different ways um, so so yeah, here's the uh, long tail keyword optimization uh, you know in terms of the keyword targeting like you mentioned uh, the user was doing a little bit more keyword research than uh, our previous, uh, you know, account. Uh, and uh, look at the distribution. There's like almost no one-word keywords at all, um, uh, and it's primarily, like you said earlier, um, uh, Sam, the two and three-word keywords. Uh, any thoughts on this? Does this look about right to you, or do you think you should be still a little bit more aggressive on targeting long-tail keywords? Uh, it kind of depends on the the shape of the market a little bit. So how many impressions are out there for different two and three word keywords. It looks good to me. I mean, it looks a lot better than the last one we saw in terms of the balance. Uh, what do you what do you normally see as the breakdown here, Larry? Like, what do you, does your data tell you is a good, a good level? Like, so I see key accounts that have like these insanely high quality scores of like nine, like on average across the entire account. And for those, I see that they're about 80% of their uh, impressions are being accrued to to long tail keywords, so it's possible. Now, you know, it's it's definitely a lot of work and stuff like that. And I'm not saying you, that. I, I mean, that's maybe a little bit of an outlier, but um, but that's as, as high as I've seen it. And and this is kind of more in the middle. Um, so yeah, the ad optimization and landing page. Uh, you know, it's pretty typical. You know, it's 54 landing pages. Uh, I mean, that's a decent amount for a lawyer. Uh, you know, any any final thoughts about this account? Because we, I think we have to go back to the the presentation here. Uh, did you have any other thoughts so about think, this guy's account? I think just these little thumbs up, thumbs down that you have on the bottom of the report here. These are actually like a lot more important to an account than maybe we've we've kind of talked about on uh, looking through them right now. So these are a lot of things that I really like to dig into. So 
uh, things like bit adjustments by device, geo, um, day parting, they can they can all make a big difference in the long run. Um, obviously, the network targeting. So it looks like uh, does does that thumbs down mean they're running search and display in the same campaign, or does it, it mean that they don't it, have one? It means that there's one or more campaigns in this account hasn't like is is targeting both. So that's so that's a pretty simple optimization. It's just because of where you spend your budget, because probably your display is more um, about getting you know impressions out there and, and getting people to you know, hear about you and your service, and those keywords are probably much more direct in terms of bringing people in. So I would never want to share my budget between a search and display campaign. So that's something pretty simple you could do right there. Um, and then so it looks like it says that. Uh, there are uh, ad groups in there that aren't running most multiple text ads, so pretty simple thing as well to optimize. And then ad extensions at the bottom not running, so that's huge. Uh, one of the, the simplest improvements I often make in accounts, like when I get them, the thing that helps the most is just to set up uh, like a, a full, fully coherent sighting strategy. So that's always the, the first thing. And then obviously call extensions is going to be important for a lawyer as well. Um, so, so those are things that are going to be like really, really important to look at, and especially with enhanced campaigns, looking at things like ad group level site links, making them as targeted as possible. Uh, that that's where I'd go for sure. Okay, I I agree. So uh, let's just get back to the presentation here. Uh, so I'll just try to summarize kind of what uh, what we're talking about here today. Uh, uh, you know, in doing your PVC optimization, uh, I think um, you know you got to know you know where your metrics are in order to know like how you stand in order to know uh, if, if it's doing good or not and so that's kind of one of the benefits of doing this AdWords audit um, um, uh, yeah this is uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff um, I wanted to, to make this a little bit more uh, concrete in terms of like um, you know, rather than just giving you some you know please optimize your account generic kind of um, you know uh, uh, platitudes, um, you know, I uh, wanted to make this real. So uh, we've always suspected here at WordStream and, and, and Hennepin Marketing, we've always suspected that uh, doing an, a periodic account audit is, is helpful uh, and that it can improve your account metrics. You know, intuitively that makes sense. But I wanted to know, like, really, like, does it really make a difference? Uh, and so um, what I did was I looked at about a couple thousand AdWords accounts who had run this particular audit. So, like the 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 slides that you're showing, we are showing today. That's the the AdWords, the free AdWords grader that you can get from uh, Hennepin Marketing, from from sorry, from PPCHero.com or from WordStream.com. But basically, um, you know, a lot of we've got tens of thousands of people running that grader, and so I wanted to see kind of you know if having run an ad AdWords audit does that actually impact the, the future performance of the account because like this is a free a free service that, that you can use and, and you don't have to become a WordStream customer or, or a Hennepin Marketing customer like it's a free tool and so what I did was I looked at people who had done uh, two or more uh, greater runs meaning like they've graded their report once you know in January and once in March or something like you know, the point is I need to have two greater reports so I, I can kind of see like how the, the the thing changes from from A to B, like you know, like did did, did it have an impact? And so, it turns out like there was about 3,500 uh, accounts that I was looking at, rep representing about 100 million in uh, in ad spend, who who had run the the greater uh, twice. On average, the kind of the the distance between the first and the last run was 119 days. And so, what I noticed was the following uh, three trends: that the the account activity goes up by 28 percent. So, you know, by seeing kind of where where the low hanging fruit is or where to focus on, I think that that kind of motivates you a little bit. Um, a little bit of how, like how my Fitbit kind of tells me like how many steps I've done today or whatever and how good that is. It, it's it's kind of motivational. It also, uh, on average, you'll see a, a click, improvements in your click-through rate and your quality scores. You know, modest single, high single-digit improvements. Uh, but but I think that's pretty impressive for 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 a period of 119 days. And so, uh, you know, I certainly would encourage you to to uh, go to either ppchero.com or wordstream.com and and run the free AdWords grader. Um, and that's kind of the the benefit fits that you, you could like to see on, on average. At this point, I would like to just open the poll question. Uh, Meg, are you still there? 
Be great. Um, so the, the offers, special offers that we have for our attendees today, uh, one is the a free trial of WordStream, uh, and um, you can that's like a PPC management software that, that you can use to self-manage your your accounts. Uh, it, it has this thing called the 20-minute PPC work week that kind of shows you, um, you know, you know what you should be focusing on, and, and it gives you helps. Uh, uh, Sam, do you want to talk about the the offer from Hannafin Marketing at all? Sure. So if any of you guys are kind of in the same boat as that second account we looked in where you're starting to ramp up your PPC spend, you're spending over kind of $20,000 a month, uh, then we offer a free solutions blueprint. So our senior, senior digital advisor will look in your account and uh, make recommendations and uh, it's kind of a list you can take away with you and it's kind of like a mini audit that we'll provide for your account. So um, the People are pretty happy when they get them. Uh, there's no obligation with them or anything, so um, definitely recommend you, you you get one of those for free. Yeah, I'd second that. I think uh, you know if 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 you were going to get a free AdWords uh, audit, uh, you know there's you know th these guys at Hennepin are. are they know their stuff. I've been reading their blogs since you know, 2007, so that's that's quite a while, and. Um, uh, I think uh, you know whenever you, get, you have someone else look over your your work, even even if you think it's it's like awesome and can't get any any better, you, you'll you'll be surprised. There's always you know dozens of things that, that you, you and ideas and other perspectives uh, that that could be helpful and um, very very valuable. So uh, so I have no problem endorsing that one. Um, all right, so I, I think we kind of went a little bit over time, but uh, Meg, do we have any time for like? Uh, uh, one or two questions, maybe. Yep, I think we've probably got a couple of minutes. Uh, so, let's see. Um, and by the way, our, uh, you know, here's the, the links for the the different offers and and our contact information. If you have any questions, uh, and if you have any questions, you can just type them into the window right now. So I have a question for you, Larry. Uh, someone wants to know if they are testing two different landing pages for the same ad. Is that going to negatively affect the performance of the account uh, since they have two duplicate ads? I assume they're probably thinking about quality score and, and that kind of thing. No, no, it, it, it's not going to make a difference. Uh, like these little short-term tests and that kind of stuff, uh, it does not uh, materially impact uh, your your quality score in the long run. Do, do, do you agree? Okay, so so here's a good question about. Um, about quality score and, and optimization. So, where do you focus first? Do you typically go for low click-through rate, low quality score, or for high spend, high conversions? Uh, well, you know, uh, so so where to focus? So it depends on the, the account. Um, if uh, you know, believe it or not, a lot of businesses don't even have conversion tracking on, or or they are. Don't have a good handle on return on ad spend kind of metrics. If that's the case, uh, of course you have to you have to find like you know low click through rate, you know low low um, uh, low quality sort of type of keywords to focus on. But it, but if you have those other kind of you know revenue metrics or, or um, cost per conversion metrics, uh, like that's a good place to start. Uh, any thoughts on that one, Sam? So one thing I like to do is I pull a pivot table, basically uh, campaign by campaign. And I will show the impression weight quality score of each of the ad groups. Uh, so, so ad group is one of my uh, pivots. And then, if there's one or two ad groups in there that look like they're in the wrong place, so say my ad, like everything's seven, eight, six, seven, eight, and then there's one or two that are like two or three, then that's like a red flag. So I'll go through the whole account and pull out all of those ad groups, and then sort them by the highest spend, and then work through them that way. So there's probably something we can do either the ads aren't right, or Google thinks the landing page isn't appropriate for that keyword. Um, and that's that's how I typically like start my optimization. So it tends to be with the, the problem children rather than uh, the high spend stuff. But then I also, if there's any keywords that are super important to my account, I'll spin those out into what I call like top performer ad groups or campaigns, and give them like one keyword to one ad. Uh, to a specific landing page. I mean, not all accounts are going to have a, a profile like that, where that's a way to do it. But for sure, if you if you do have keywords that are super important to your you know, your profit or whatever, then I like to keep them in their own bucket. Uh, I got another quick question, Larry. So, uh, when is the earliest we should start optimizing an account? 
Uh, well, that has to do with uh, the impression volume, right? So, uh, you know, for if, if your ads aren't aren't getting uh, any impressions, then it doesn't make sense to to optimize. And um, the the, th the, th the threshold is pretty low. Um, you know, Google can actually evaluate the quality score of an ad within um, you know 200 impressions. So, you know, I think uh, uh, it's less of a kind of a you know. I think the the, the the factor should be less about um, the what's the the earliest you should optimize. It's like more about just making it regular. So whatever that interval is for you, whether it's like once a month or once a week, depending on the size of your account, I think it's important to just uh, you know have a certain rhythm and 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 um, and workflow uh, and 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 um, and just and keep at it because of the, because it's kind of more of a marathon. Uh, any thoughts? Sir? So I think from, from day one, pretty much, I mean, it's, it's different things you're working on, you're optimizing. So like, as soon as you start, you're looking at your landscape, so where your bids are, where your click-through rates are, uh, and you kind of work from there. But there's a couple of posts on BBC Hero, which are like the ultimate guide to your first 30 days of account management or something. And I think there's like a post that's the first day and then the first seven days and the first 30 days and kind of walks through it. But as far as we're concerned, like day one, if you get it, if it's an existing account, we tend to spend a little more time analyzing for the first week or two. Um, but th that's that's kind of my take on it anyway. The the more the better. Uh, we we had a so this is an interesting one, Larry. So I know you guys at WordStream have a new tool, but um, what's the best way to optimize a landing page? The landing page. Um, gosh. Uh... You know, there's all this stuff that happens before the user even hits that landing page, which I find is generally pretty. Um... Okay, here here's a crazy uh, answer here. Um, I mean, yes, you read all these stories about changing the button colors and adding form fields or whatever. the The best landing page optimization tactic I would suggest is uh, trying out like different offers or or. Um, uh, or, or different flows. So, for example, like WordStream, where uh, we sell PPC management software, you know, we, we you can either run the the greater or the trial. And so, we wanted to see, like, should we be pushing people to to uh, you know to audit their account first, or should they we, we be pushing them to to um, you know uh, to, to do a, a free trial? Um, and then and, and you know you just Actually, changing the flow, like like oh, let's make this optional, or let's make this um, uh, let's let's not even promote this trial or whatever. Like the, the the biggest wins in landing page optimization, in my opinion, happen happen when you're not just doing on page tweaks, but actually like radically changing either the offer or the um, the uh, the flow of things. If that makes any sense? Yeah, and I think there's the so when people talk about optimizing a landing page, there's kind of two things. One is optimizing for your customers, so uh, you make more sales, you can bid more because your CPA comes down, that means you're probably going to get higher click-through rates because you're getting better positions, you're getting more clicks through. The other is optimizing for Google, so making sure Google thinks in that little speech bubble that pops up when you hover over your keyword that your landing page relevancy is good. So that's just having good content that's relevant to your keyword, uh, having a landing page that loads quickly, um, that kind of thing. So there, there's two ways to think about it. Generally, I prefer to make more sales than to worry too much about Google, uh, but this is the way to think about it. Then I think we've got two more questions here, Larry. Uh, I'll try and speed through them. So, so one person was wondering uh, uh, how to decide between hiring Hannapin or Workstream to assist with account management. So uh, I'll, answer, I'll answer for us real quick. So if, if, you're, if you're spending um, over $20,000, that's where you come to Hannapin. We tend to work with uh, like enterprise level clients, and then uh, Larry, if you want to talk a little bit about work. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we work with uh, smaller businesses, like you know, more modest spend ranges, like you know, you know, like that first account spending around twenty five hundred dollars uh, a month. That's more our sweet spot. And then we have one final PPC based question. So, if I use phrase match keywords for long tail campaigns, should I create duplicate ad groups for plurals? <laughs> Do you want to take that one? Sure. So um, I, I tend to use, uh, so I used to use plurals a lot. Since close variants have come in to AdWords, I, I normally stick with that and then audit it about once a month. So I'll run a search term report 
and then pivot my data and show like exact exact close variant phrase phrase close variant and uh, you can just sort by you can pivot by match type to get that and then I'll see if there's a big difference between the CPA and if there is then I'll think about spinning out plurals into their own uh, their own ad groups or own keywords but otherwise I'll just leave them as close variants yeah um, I think it, I think it used to matter a lot and now it's just mattering less and less as the match types are kind of converging a little bit um, cool all right so thanks again for everyone for joining us today uh, you know uh, that concludes our webinar um, thank you thanks Sam for having me and um, that's great cool thanks Larry thanks Espen.